My name is Petro Cole. I am a patient here at Silver Spurs. I have been here for quite some time. They say that it is nice here. I think it's true. They give me medication, I get food, I get free money, I get free uh, housing, free residency. The doctors say I have visions and voices. Those are diagnosed as hallucinations as far as schizophrenia is concerned. I've only been here since October 28th, and the 29th I almost uh, bled to death. I had a psychic tell me I had already earned my heaven because I've been through so much. I need to hate myself. I need to hate myself a lot. You know, I didn't like myself. I'm gonna do myself in. They had diagnosed me with three different things. Three, not one. Okay, I'll tell you. Schizophrenic factor. Bipolar, manic depressive, major depressions, three different things. As I got older, I just got sicker, you know. So I had to go to a group home. Something I can do for you, mister? Maybe. Welcome to Silver Spur Hotel. This is where many of our desperados hide out. Now you just see one going to hide out now. Looks nice, nice. Bud. <coughs> There's our restroom here. My name had made up some jokes, made up six or seven in my travel. I've been meaning to do this. I thought, well, I'll just make up some jokes today. I tried one out on you. Yes, I tried one out on you. Let's see. I'll give you the test. Here, so. Okay, have you all been reading the news? I heard that uh, Santa was getting a divorce from his wife. He found her in the bathtub with Mr. Clean. <laughs> What? You want to make sure you're supposed to be leaving the 
<laughs> well, I'm trying to keep them clean. Remember, we have respect. This is a respectable house. No spitting on the floor. No more than six to a bed. Uh, why did uh, Why did Santa throw his elves out of the workshop? Because uh, he found them in there toying around. <laughs> Okay, Why did Santa get out of jail free? He had a bulldog. Bulldog. <laughs> he had to nope. get out of jail free, free card. Him. He showed him in the statues the no Santa clause. <laughs> <laughs> This is the room where we eat at. That's where it fits the place at and everything for juice and bread and the food. What do you want for Christmas? If you can have anything in the entire world, what would you pick? Pops. Pops. <laughs> lots and lots of pops, pops of all colors and shapes mm -hmm. and sizes. You gonna make a Christmas wish list as well? Mm-hmm. What do you want? A row or a pair of socks. Oh. Just socks and stuff. <laughs> That's all I want. Socks? Yeah. What do you want for Christmas? Socks. Hello, everybody. I'm Martin Rogers. It's me in a Silver Spur, 2614 Utah, St. Louis, Missouri, 6311 a I would consider Martin as the baby of the house. Yeah. You know, as far as the man, male wise, he's just like the baby of the house. So, Phil? Yes, Socks? Ready on. If you could have anything in the entire world, what would it well, be? Well, I could wash socks and be ready on. That's it? That's all you want? If you could choose anything in the whole world, you'd pick that? Really? That's nice. I want the lime muscle, beef summer sausage, cheddar cheese, or Swiss cheese, and crackers, club oh, crackers. Oh. Money and clothes. You know, Michelle got a good heart. All the time, go get gifts for the people. When I had some money, I just blurred it because I got a 21 piece chicken dinner one night and gave everybody some. I said, eat till your heart's content. What about you, Natasha? Socks, anything in the whole world, diamonds and gold and jewelry and. Just pick socks, mm -hmm. pants, clothes, that's it. I see. Back in the Silver Spur jail here, so. One of those things we're real proud of. So, this is a real piece of American history so that we have, so I'm real proud of it, so. Now, this is a soda machine candy, and you can get anything you want. I generally like to buy candy bars out of here. Every time I give my money, I buy candy bars. I can't get them right there because it won't refund. And up here is the post office. It took me a while to figure out even where to put it. I didn't realize it was so big. And when I bought it, and I said, what am I going to do with this? But anyway, I finally figured out a place to put it, which is real cute. You know, so we made a little church scene out of this up here. Every town had a church, too. So you had a cross there and a little church bell and whatever. So. I better not wish for too much, so you'd be disappointed. <laughs> I would like love to love and be loved, and peace and joy throughout all the world and the universe. Every loving toward one another, everyone loving one another. I need new glasses also. And new teeth, new teeth. I'm a published poet. My, my pen name is Cecilia Gable Restivo, and I write poetry and lyrics. I'm published uh, in eight different anthologies. New glasses. They have a new surgery where they implant little bitty telescopes in the pupil, the black part of the eye. I want to get that surgery this year, in the new year. I'd like that for Christmas. 
I want to be discovered. All right. I lost a lot of things because of my disease. I lost my children. Um, I lost my apartment, you know, my freedom. Actually, I'm a man to present up and down like a yo-yo. <sighs> we think I am today. Many are depressed. I was on my own for so long that I'm having a hard time dealing with living in a group home, you know. Why did you pick the Silver Spur? How did you end up here? I thought it was beautiful. <laughs> I got a plan, you know. I'm going to leave that place eventually. You think it's all positive, but there's so many negatives to it. You would not believe that. It's pretty, but looks are deceiving. Girl, what do you want? That's your wish, okay? Talk, uh, no, you a new apartment, yeah, like a Monte Carlo, new clothes, for me and Kurt to be happy, and a job. This my girlfriend named Cash John. We in Sippy Spur. You know, they've been going together for a couple of years now. Not that long. How long have we been together? Been? Uh, about four months. What I love about him is his smile, his personality. I like her smile. Mm -hmm. uh -oh. Uh -oh. Damn it. I like to her, her hold me and like, you know, her hold me, you know. I like that. I really, I really do like that. We have each other. Like, if I get down, he can help me. If he gets down, I can help him. I wish I didn't have this depression. I gotta get myself well so I can get out of here. Because me and Carmen go, go out into the world and get married. Here I am on a strange rank, many miles from home. When I get back home to Texas, I vow no more to roam. But I met lots of nice folks since I've been here. And they sure do treat me right. But I miss that cowboy and hoop and yell in town on Saturday night. I'm real pleased to have you so I can sing uh, country, uh, rock and roll, easy listener, maybe different, all except hard rock and things like that. So uh, my name is Joe Arena. I'm one of the owners and administrators of the facility. So uh, whoever wants to get up here and rap or sing or whatever they can do, we can do that too. So. Uh, so, without ado, uh, I guess we'll go ahead and get started. Oh, give me arms where the buffalo roam, where the fields and the antelope play, where seldom is a as a spiriting word and the stars in the cloudy all I am Joanne Pate and uh, I'm the director of nursing at Silver Spur. I've never had a resident not like Joey. If I have a problem with somebody or somebody gets unhappy about something, Joey will bend over backwards to try and fix it or alleviate it or, you know, if it's something that can be done, he will try to do it. Anytime Joey comes in for activity day, on karaoke days when he's here doing that, they really get a kick out of his singing even though he's off key sometimes and he doesn't hear that. Um, but they love to get up there and karaoke with him. I am Mark to Mike, I am GV. Can we get on down to the bottom to bring the little bit to the bottom 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 to the
I've always been fascinated with the old West. Even as a little kid, I always played Cowboys and Indians and had my, my two guns and stuff. And when I was little, I used to watch Hopalong Cassidy Saturday morning right through high school and grade school and all. I was always fascinated with, uh, with the Old West. There's the Buffalo Bill Cody cabin here. And incidentally, I have the gloves that Buffalo Bill Cody used in his Wild West show of the 1880s. I'll show them to you when we get down to the uh, trading post on the block. We're going to show you room in the okay. Is that okay? You know who cab about hat and he cab about boots. You heard my heart coming. You heard it. I'll turn Joe. He wears those noisy spurs that I can't stand on his boots. Oh my gosh, those things are so noisy. Very, very tricky walking with spurs on. It really is. So, so another tip is never squat with your spurs on. <laughs> You only got to learn that once. I moved in and he was coming down the steps. I was like, who are you? I found out later that that was the owner. He looked a little bit far out to be a resident. Residents go, don't go walking around in cowboy boots, chaps, a cowboy outfit, and a hat. I'm going to take you down to the uh, the old trading post that we have here, which is kind of unique and, and unusual. So we got some really unique things. And this is from the old west and days when they had sugar. That's supposed to be a bag of, a bag of goodies. You say sugar and uh, it's got a, like, dime, like a real gold pieces in it. So what do you think of like the western theme and all that? It's real neat. I like it. You like it? Mm-hmm. And antiques everywhere. I think it's startling. The owners are so nice. The staff is so nice. The residents are so nice. I, I told Jody, the owner, that, and she said, "Well, see, I thought you'd like it here." And boy, she was right. Well, I was kidding Michelle, one of my roommates. I said. Uh, my family's gonna be mad at me because I'm wearing blue jeans, but my dress pants don't have any pockets. I'm gonna tell them this is my cowboy Christmas because I'm staying at the Best Western Inn. Best Western Inn. That's good. <laughs> okay, okay. No, bad it, yeah. joke, bad joke. No, I totally get it. That's funny. Okay. This is the Wyatt Earp cabin right here so one of the old gunfight at the OK Corral people so that's another story. I'm going to show you your room honey is that okay? Yeah. Where we put in a well and a pump and one of the things I've always wanted that I've admired is outhouses so I put us in an outhouse too so <laughs> so you have a Silver Spur outhouse. You know the western theme is real nice it's real nice but um, I'm not familiar with, with western culture on the uh, historical um, I'm reminded of Tom Sawyer on Huckleberry Finn. I think it's like a shit. It is it's okay, but um, they can't too far, though. It's, it's off a show. Knock, knock. We're going to show you room, sweetie, so come on in. And here we have the steamboat room. Complete, but there's your slot machine. Of course it doesn't work. The first thing the girl says, oh, is it going to work? And I says, no, it's just, <laughs> it's just there for looks. <laughs> this is our gambling table. Whenever we want to uh, play cards, shoot craps, there's our uh, little poker chips and our cards. Well, can you actually play with these? No. It's glued down. We're right back where we started from. And this is where we eat dinner at. That's the news right there on, the, on TV right now. That's all. There you go. Okay, tell what the heart mean. The big heart is his heart for me. And the little heart is all for my kids' heart. It's like two hearts in one. And they mean two different things. 
Friday, um, Terry knocked me down in the dining room. I'm like, I'm kind of scared of Terry now. Kurt knows he can't do nothing, but he, he really wants to mess him up bad. He knows if he does, you know, he'll be out of here. That's why me and Kurt's ready to get out of here. Cause we seen too much shit around here. Whenever I first came in here, it was like all positive. And now I'm seeing negative stuff. And I don't like negative. I don't like living around negative. And I try and stay around positive people. There's my ham, Kurt. <laughs> Kurt, give me that, like, about six months ago. You're coming in here and you're seeing what it's like to live here. Try staying the rest of your life. really hard at times. Because I'm certain beyond this curtain we lived past lives together before, much more, much more than I care to implore. We see in the seeds of love, angels' wings and all sorts of things, such as love, only give once more, more. I've watched our relationship grow much more than I care to know or ever realize what I saw that moment in your eyes. Once again, I'll need a friend. We've passed our pace of leather and lace. Come stand beside me and once more oblige me. In no way in this lover to friend. That's it. To them, the world out there is pretty scary, and it's a, it's a cold, cruel place out there, and they've been out there and don't like it very much. I get honest. Most people in here, they, you know, they got a problem. All the, the, the people need a chance, need a boots. You know, you know they say they bad the Sydney, you know, what's wrong with them? Some of the people are scared. See the real world out there, discuss, move on with the life, and really, you know, I don't blame them. They've got a place with some money in their pocket. They've got three meals a day, uh, uh, activity, a lot of activities to do there and things. James, come on, Miss Francis. One day, Miss Francis. Sometimes they give you a certain amount of money every month. Yeah. Do you know how much money you get? Five dollars a week. Five dollars a week? Yeah. What do you usually like to spend your money on? Food. What, what kind of food do you get? All sorts of food. Hot dog, hamburgers, roast beef, chicken. In residential care facility, which is what our license is, um, you are able to come and go. Um, you do have to follow our curfew rules. You're able to leave um, in the morning. Some of our clients work, so they may leave early for work. They need to be home by 11 p.m. They can have visitors pretty much any time they want up until 8 o'clock in the evening. Um, some of them go home on the weekends to spend the weekend with their family. Some of them have jobs and work part-time. Um, some of them go to sheltered workshops, some of them go to, to clubs in the area that work with younger clientele. Stop. <laughs> Zika Pio, right here. Do you remember that? Yeah. That's what I told you last week. And we try to let people live, live their lives just like they did before they came to Silver Store. We try to make it as least restrictive as possible. So again, they don't feel like they're living in an institution. Yeah. Talk to the camera. Come on, Roger. I feel 
lot of ferns around here. Martin's a, not a very good bowler, as you can see. <laughs> he's got the uh, bumpers up and he's still afraid to throw the ball. <laughs> <laughs> there, there you go. There you go, Missy. Go ahead. I have my ups and down days and I get these crying spells. I don't know why. I wish I could do something about them. I just... I'm not good at don't feel like some things are worthwhile. Mom, don't use in it. Don't use in it. I got a swipe. A woman be about having my hands up. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yes, my name is Coke Manager. I did his hippie spurs. I, you know, I really don't want, you know, see me, but to go and take care of me all the time, you know. I don't like that. You know, I like to be, you know, do things, do fun things, be happy. Get away from here. Now, don't start that again. But, Don, I'm afraid of this place, and I don't want you mixed up in this crowd. You're the only brother I have, and I've got to look after you. Well, get that idea out of your head. I'm not a baby, and no one has to look after me. My sister, Ruth, took the care of what took care of me for a long time. She wasn't able to take care of me no more. And she helped me get my own place. And that's how I ended up here. See, my ex-husband used to abuse me. And he... He was a child molester. So, like, I didn't have no where to take the kids whenever I left him. So I left my girls with him. You think they're still with him? If he's still living. And different residents have different issues like the ones that do have children. I think they definitely suffer more because they don't get to see their kids or they've lost custody of their children. And it's not that they were bad parents, it's just that they're mentally ill, you know. My son, I see him I, every other weekend on Sundays. Most of the times they can't take care of them, so the state takes them away or their family um, takes them. and. Um, you know, that's very sad. What is that, Sandy? Huh? Your it's a letter, a letter from my daughter. Oh, really? Uh-huh. You know what, what does it say? Yeah. It says cat day. <laughs> What's cat day? I don't know. <laughs> I got a 21-year-old, a 17-year-old, and a 9-year-old. They're all girls. <laughs> Dear Mommy, there isn't a day that goes by that I don't think about you. I have you in my prayers every day. You always be my number one mom. I love you so, so much. I could always go on. Please sometime let's meet so we could be together and talk. Love you, Danielle. 
I don't have much family anymore. My mom and dad died. My brother lives in West Virginia. I never see him. My sister is about my only family I have. And my psychiatrist told her that if she wouldn't have been my guardian, the state would have been my guardian, which would have probably been really bad. I have bad sorrow here. Bad, really bad sorrow here. My, all the time my mother go to work. Her boy, he all the time called me to his room and tied me to the bed and has sex with me. He had relaxed me. A lot of times mental illness runs in the family. I mean, if you have one, if you look back, you'll find another person that's been mentally ill somewhere. And sometimes it can be the immediate family or, you know, an uncle or cousin. And, you know, so they have to grow up and live with that. My sister Ruth is the only one that really cares about me and my health and that. That's why I'm here. I got 33 other brothers and sisters there. <laughs> Adopted, of course. My parents started this business when I was seven years old, back in 1973. Jody Pate is my sister. Cindy is my sister. She's my older sister and Joey's younger sister. Kim, who is Jody's daughter, is working there. My sister-in-law, Trish uh, Herbst, works here, and she is a licensed practical nurse. Mm -hmm. And then Brittany is my daughter. Oh, man. So she's Jody's right. niece. <laughs> Major confusion. <laughs> Major confusion. Right. One thing I instill with the girls is that we are, we are one family here. I said, without these people, we would have nothing. So, you know, you take care of them, and they'll take care of us. Mad man Martin here, boy. This, this is the old pro right here. Oh, it's Dad. Oh, it's Dad. Hey, buddy. And what about him? The A buddy. Oh, all our staffs are nice. Well, thank you, Martin. Look, put your hand down here first, okay? Just like that, okay? Now, scooch this hand over here like this. Then you make a V like that, okay? <laughs> Spread it out. Adam, boy. I had self spare forever, about 10 years. <laughs> Ten years tops, huh? Yeah. You gonna leave us after ten? Two thousand eleven. Two thousand eleven. He knows from ten years ago. He came in two thousand one. Yeah. Only way you can leave us is if you get married. I get married. Yeah. <laughs> then you want to sight down that cue, just like you're sighting down a gun, at a boy. You get the center of the ball and aim for that, okay? Ah, look at there. You see how good this man is. Boy, you're all right. We're going to call you Minnesota Mark. Right, right, right. Lost his alpha, life skill center. Thank you. Um, you go to Union Station sometimes? I go to Union Station with Hooters. You like Hooters? Yeah. You like the food? Yeah. Why do you like Hooters? They're, they're hot dogs and beans. Oh, it's not the waitresses at Hooters? Yeah. Those are pretty nice too, huh? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hot dog with cheese. All right. Do you want any chili or onions or relish? Just the cheese? Just cheese. Is American cheese okay? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, how'd that work out for you, Martin? Okay? Yeah. Did you enjoy that? So, yeah. how many girlfriends did you meet? Didn't meet no girls. Uh, well, how come, my man? Wasn't you the big man on campus down there? Uh -huh. Yeah. <laughs> Come on,
She'll be all right in a couple days. Just keep her from moving around and uh, uh, give her a couple of these pills every three hours. Looks like you could use a couple of pills yourself. Bell, I, I want to talk to you. All right, Doc. Sometimes it's good to get things off your mind. Hi, my name is Michelle Goff. I've been at Silver Spur for four years, going on five, March 5th. 2004 will be five years. And I love it here. Yeah. Yes. The workers here are wonderful. The workers here are wonderful. Come on, guys. It's medicine time. Come on, everybody. It's medicine time. My name is Steve Harvey. I'm an MD. I specialize in psychiatry. Uh, I come to Silver Spur about once a month and see uh, a little more than half of the people that live here. I see them to, uh, to take care of their psychiatric medications. Most of the time mental illness can be treated with medications, but with medications you have side effects and when residents experience the side effects then they don't want to take the medication. So it's almost like a vicious cycle. Also on medication they start feeling better so then they think well I don't need this anymore because I'm better. In psychiatry the psychiatric illnesses themselves make people less able to see their own illness. My name is Robbie Perry. Okay Robbie. And I don't believe I'm a schizophrenic. <laughs> But um, I feel genuinely that probably in the next two to three years, I'm going to prove that I'm not schizophrenic. Someone with schizophrenia with delusions, um, you know, we can tell them that their delusion's not true and it's just their imagination playing tricks on them, but, uh, but they won't believe me. They say I see things and hear things. I don't see things abnormally. I don't hear things abnormally. And I'm not always seeing visions. I'm not always hearing voices. But if I do, it's not abnormal, it's not catastrophic, it's not bizarre. It's something that aids my understanding of the natural world in a more prolific and profound way. Most of them uh, really think that, that they're not ill, um, which makes kind of an awkward situation when we're talking to them about treatment and everything. If I was sick, I would accept it. If I had a cold, I would take medicine. If I had a flu, I'd take medication. Um, if I had chicken pox, I took medicine for that. I was sick. But it's, there's not one thought in my brain that tells me I'm diagnosed, and, and, and even though the doctors have authority and uh, things like that, I can't accept that. I can't accept schizophrenia. I can't accept depression. For me to accept that would be to put something on me that is not true to who, I'm, true to what I am, and true to who I am. It's my American right to refuse medication. I don't feel it's anybody's uh, business to. Um, put 40 injections in you in the month's time. So I talked to Robbie yesterday. How about taking it? Yes, he admitted that he didn't take it. And I said, why didn't you take it? He said, well, I think my system has too much medicine in it. I said, well, Robbie, you know, to live here, you have to take your medicine. You can't not take your medicine or you're going to end up in the hospital. And then he said, um, he said, oh, OK, I understand that. And then he said, he's so smart. And God, he's so intelligent. He said. Well, what about my residence rights? Don't I have the right to refuse things? And I said, well, yeah, some people do, but you don't because you have a guardian. And your guardian says you have to take your medicine or you have to go to the hospital. <laughs> What's up? She, she think I'm crazy, too. I think crazy is a derogatory term. Well, it's schizophrenic just a derogatory. <laughs> <laughs> the people that end up here are usually here in a group home for a reason. and. Sometimes the reason is that their psychiatric illness won't get 100% better with treatment. They're one of the unlucky ones that might just get 30% better or something like that. And, um, and sometimes there's other reasons, like it might be a patient that, uh, you know, every time they're better, they try to stop their medicines and they go bad again. That's the thing that I'm here for, is to take care of their psychiatric medications. There, there's a little bit of informal therapy that goes along with it, just because we're here and they're here and we're talking, so there's, there's some therapy that's, uh, that's unavoidable, even if I were, you know, inclined to avoid it. You're not like hearing voices no. or seeing things? 
not thinking about killing yourself no. or hurting other people. These are silly, sound like silly questions no. to you. Okay, your mood's pretty much okay. Mm -hmm. right. Okay, okay, you know I need to do drugs. Uh-huh. And, you know, I need to, okay, I wake up, I be sweaty, and I be shaking, uh -huh. everything. Does, I would, does it, it feel kind of similar to withdrawal yeah. and stuff? Or mm -hmm. it, kind of the same sort of feeling? Or? Right. Oh, okay. How long have you been off of drugs for? How long's that been? I've been keen for about ten years now. But it's still it's still stuck in your head a lot, right. isn't it? Yeah. Pro probably those spells where you feel scared and you wake up all sweaty. It's it's probably a, it's probably a nightmare. You know, either about mm -hmm. getting burned or about mm -hmm. drugs or something like that. And, uh, I wish I had a pill for that, but I don't. Nah, th I don't think I nah, do. No, 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 <laughs> Sorry. No, no, no one yeah. more pills. But yeah, yeah, you're you're taking you're taking probably more than your share, very share of pills right. anyway. So yeah, so prob yeah, probably all I can do there is say, hey, hang in there. You know, uh, you know, but, I'm yeah. gonna, you know, yeah. Yeah. I didn't, I'm not gonna give up. You yeah. know. Yeah, yeah, I mean, you're, you're doing overall. You're doing pretty good. Right, like, you know, yeah. I'm closer to move out of here anyway. Yeah, you're hoping to move out of here. So right. yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it looks as if we've got a lot of work ahead of us. Yeah. You know what I think? What? If we consolidated, it'd make it much easier. That's a good idea. You think so? I second the motion. Our plan is to move out into our own apartment, get our own place, save up some money, and I think he's going to ask Jody if we can get married here instead of in a church. This is where we met, and he liked to get married here. I sprained her by my accident, you know, told, you know, by my memory, you know, I can't be all like that. And her set me how, you know, I really am in life. And her say, like her told me, say, her like, her like taking my man in life, you know. Her said her love me for my heart and my kind. What and, money? And my lights. What money? <laughs> you know. It goes, uh, my heart was looking for the loneliest soul. Say something to me to make a difference. Come tell me I'm your only ever loving prince. This lifestyle has made me kind of lonely till you came upon the scene. Now it's you that I wish only. Now do you understand and know exactly what I mean? going very well. My name is Michelle Goss. Remember me? I told you about how I got here to Silver Spur. Yeah, I didn't tell you how I got on TV. But I guess you know that. I'm beautiful! Yes. Well, anyway, and one and anyway, I'm having a wonderful day. Things are happening for me. I just recently had a hernia surgery. Listen up, residents. I need you guys to come down for the Easter egg hunt. Come on, guys. It's the Easter egg hunt. Come on, guys. 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 Come
I gotta go. So I'll talk to you later. <laughs> Happy I fight today. Uh, I good move always. Always a good move. My feelings that I'm feeling right now is I'm happy that I live to see another day and God has truly blessed me. Anything important on my mind, what I have to say, I'm looking forward to learning about all the things that I do not know about to get ready for to leave in this place and get out of here. I pray in Jesus' name, God, that uh, I live to see another day tomorrow. beginnings. We celebrate them. I'm really a Christian now. I, mean, I go to church every Sunday and every Wednesday. I give God a, a lot of credit for me doing better, a lot. But now I feel like I'm intelligent, I can hold on a good conversation, and that's what's a miracle to me. If I say I have a spiritual voice or a spiritual vision, they call me schizophrenic because they're looking at it as a hallucination, more so than a holy revelation. Ever since I've been born, I've heard the voice of the Lord. I, I got called into the ministry by vision. I think that uh, we're put on this earth to uh, to go through and try to do good for other people and whatever. So I uh, I believe in reincarnation. If you want to get into that, I guess I might as well throw a little bit of that at you. So yeah, I, I think I've lived before because of my uh, I'm, I'm sure I must have lived in the Old West back then because of my background and my fascination with that. I believe that uh, a lot of times the, uh, you come back to pay off your old karmic debts. You're always trying to get better and more godlike and, and more spiritual or whatever. And so you come back in this lifetime and, um, and, and try to do better and try to get yourself in a spot where you can do good for humanity. take them out to my house. I've got a beautiful place in the country and um, with, a, with a little speedboat that we run them around in. They love going out to his house. I mean, he looked there for three years looking for something that he could afford and he was really adamant he wanted to be on the lake because we wanted to be able to bring the residents out to boating and do barbecues and I mean, they just really, really enjoy that. Since we bought it, we started bringing them on down, so that's was one of the purposes of getting it. I wanted them to enjoy what we have too because when you get from other people, you should give back. And so I wanted them to enjoy this as well as, as myself. I look at everything different now. I used to look at everything and everybody negatively. And I didn't like anybody and I stayed in my room and I wouldn't participate in anything, you know. Now I like a lot of people here, you know, when I participate, you know. He's got a little ride around boat. He puts about five or six of us in a time. That's what I'm getting this about here. Welcome to the Silver Spur Yacht Club. Yeah, we're busting out tonight. We're busting out tonight. We like furniture shop and our new home. Found some real reasonable furniture up there. We're gonna get out of here as soon as we can. We never gonna make it. 
Mm -hmm. I mean, as far as the cooking, the medication. Oh, yes. Too good. <laughs> Baby, go give me a soda. Get out of my gun, it's your fault. And I think Kirk and Carolyn are going to be in for a rude awakening because I think that they still have a lot of issues that they need to work on. I just don't think it's going to happen, you know. For their sake, I hope not, you know, because they move out of here, you know, and quick as they move out, we fill back up and, they, you know, they want to come back and be in the West Point State. You know, if we're going to stay here, we can't do the go what we want to do in life. Really, they want to be out of here, you know, we, you know, somewhere we can call home. Jackets under the seats first, do we? That is the first time I ever did that in my whole life. Are you serious? Yes. 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 <laughs> That's because I've been poor all my life. <laughs> You're still poor. I know. Yeah, I know. I'll always be poor. But, but, at, least, <laughs> but, but at least you're you're poor with pride. Poor with dignity. <laughs> I'm 50, almost 50. And every apartment I had, I never had a real house. But I made my apartments look better and I planted r roses, tulips, impatience, daisies. There's a lot of plants in this world. The, only, the worst thing I've done being manic is I bounced 26 checks. I don't know why I did it. I have no idea. I had the checkbook and I was living by myself. And I decided, oh, I want to go shopping. And I, when I went, I went to places I never went to before. Northwest Plaza, Southwest Plaza, Crestwood, all the expensive places, Pennies, Famous. <laughs> I can't even remember how I got there. <laughs> and I have lost, okay, in two and a half months, I have lost 26 pounds. Wow, congratulations, how did you do that? I don't know, when I, I'm manic, I exercise like hell. <laughs> sometimes I realize I'm manic and sometimes I have no idea, you know. <laughs> Sometimes I'm depressed and I realize it, and sometimes I don't know at all. See, if you don't get the dead stuff off of the flowers, it takes away from the live ones. You know what I mean? Yeah, there's a million flowers that are dead here. Can you believe that? <laughs> How's the food? Good. 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 I don't want to tackle. I don't do tackles. What do you tackle me? What you tackle me? He had proposed to me a long time ago. And the first time I said no. And he, then he come back like two weeks later and asked me. I got the brain and the earrings and the uh, necklace for me. He got down on one knee and said, will you marry me? And, I said, and he was going to cry if I said no. I got off my knee. Marry me, marry me, marry me. <laughs> it's hard to save up for the marriage license if we're living in here. Because we only get $20 a month. Because they take out five for our cable. It costs almost $60 for a marriage license. This would go in the front room, Kurt. Not in the bedroom. <laughs> we don't move out for another couple months. They know we're moving out together anyway. So they want to see how we would get along 
sleeping in the same bed and waking up the next next to each other. Because if we don't get along in here, we ain't gonna get along on the outside. Right, you're getting this one for me. <laughs> <laughs> if we don't work together, then we ain't gonna make it. Now I told her, you know, you know, we move out. We say, I don't like to auger. They say, you want to auger. Auger in the mirror. You know, you see yourself. He don't get upset. It's just, he worries about me whenever I get real quiet. I guess, in a way, that's good. One of my therapies I like to do <laughs> is eat my Chinese food. I love my uh, shrimp fried rice. I guess whenever I get sad, I eat my shrimp fried rice if I got the money for it. The only kind of job I think I'll be able to do is like a sheltered job where I go work in a, like a Goodwill or something like that. I can't really do nothing fast paced. If they work, then Medicaid counts that as income and expects them to turn that over for room and board. Well, that defeats the whole purpose of them working. You know, now if they work in a sheltered workshop, then that's not counted as income. But again, that's another type of government program, and there's a waiting list for that. But they're going to get a job. But they're going to get a job. She's going to be working in a workshop, and I'm going to have a regular job. I don't want to work what in a workshop, you know. I want a good paying job. Good morning, apple pickers. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Eckerd's Orchard. I have four rows for you to pick from, and they are right here. You can get either go in that direction or this direction. When you get through picking, come on back over here for your ride back in. If something happened to me tomorrow, I, I, I'd feel satisfied and look back and say, by golly, I, I really think I did the best I could with what I had, you know. And uh, so I, I, I wouldn't have any regrets about it. Come on. Yeah, we'll get you. We'll find a spot to sit down here, okay? See this spot over here in the shade? I think I can feel real good about this life. I've helped a lot of people. And uh, they say, you know, from what I've studied on it, that you have uh, nine bad lives for every one good one. So, you know, so I guess I'm going through one of my good ones. Okay, got it? Okay. Okay, okay Chief, I'm going to go over and pick, uh, they got the, the uh, Golden Delicious a little bit further over, so I'm going to go over there and pick, okay? So, um, these are all red, Golden Delicious, and... Uh, Pick some green ones too. Those are uh, for you. I mean, you want them. You want them not ripe. Is that what you're right. saying? Okay. You want to. You want to let them ripen over a few days. Okay. It takes a lot of patience. That's something you really have to train your your mind to do to, to suppress that anger over the years and to realize that that they're there because they can't help themselves. Huh. Okay. I'm gonna go over and pick some for you, sweetie. So you just sit there and watch everybody. A lot of them. I guess I want to say they're more childlike and they're more happy and satisfied and all that and, and they can teach you to, hey, slow down, relax, you know, don't pressure your life and go through it and, until you uh, have a nervous breakdown yourself or, or you wind up uh, uh, with a mental problem, you know, and just don't let life be that high of a race. Even if you're mentally ill, that doesn't mean you don't have a purpose in society. You know, a lot of my residents, um, they'll get down on their self because they think they're not doing well. And I try to point out, look at everything you've accomplished. You haven't been in the hospital for six months. That's a huge accomplishment, you know, maybe because before you came here, maybe you were being hospitalized every month. I definitely think God puts us here. We're here for a reason. And I think when we've completed whatever it is he wants us to do, you know, that's when you're gonna go.
I get married 2006. I'm moving 2007. You're getting married? Yeah. Who are you going to marry? It's Michelle. Michelle? Does Michelle know about my this? Approval? Uh, are you looking for my blessing? You looked at me. <laughs> you have my blessing. What do you like about her? She's intelligent. She's real intelligent. What else do you like about her? Uh, pers personality, good personality. We heard a rumor that you and Martin are dating. Yeah, we are. Yeah? Uh-huh. So that's not a rumor, it's true. Right. Okay. Martin got down on his hands and knees one day and asked Michelle to be his girlfriend. <laughs> it was funny. I wish you could have got it on camera. But she told him he had to get rid of Natasha first. He wanted Natasha. She was using him, and she had her own boyfriend. And he, she would tell him, and she would say, but I love you, Natasha. Mm -hmm. Kissing her hand, and then kissing her mm -hmm. on the lips. I was like, how can you do that? Oh. Uh, did you used to date Natasha too? Well, she's flirting with everybody. I got, I count on Michelle. She's so sweet. But we kiss on the lips now. Took me a long time to get that way, but. <laughs> I was like, I don't know if it helped get that way again, but it did. <laughs> I couldn't do it because he be having food and stuff all coming out of his mouth when he eats. I just can't do it. <laughs> We're gonna talk in five minutes. I gotta see how it's gonna go. Because he's gonna give me a ring in the year five thoughts. <laughs> so it'll never come. <laughs> give me a hug, Mark. I love Michelle. I love you too. Well, I get married in 2006, okay? May, May or June 2006. May? Yeah. My first time in February. And did they give you any medicine to take for depression? It did. Were you taking it before you had your depression? Before. You was taking medicine? Yeah. Don't be depressed, boy. I love you. Yeah. You'll be alright. That's uh, G T. That is the water you got. Water? Yeah. I like the hair, son. Thank you. Yeah.
Get it in there. Oh no. <laughs> That's alright. I guess I'll get something later. or whatever, so yeah. The, the Fonz from the 50s, from Happy Days, so that's what I did, so. Yesterday. Did he? Oh, he came for a snack. He bought me a more snack. Somebody. They're my little bedroom. They're my little bedroom boy here. I keep busy. You know. Not too busy. You know. They my boy here. They my big buddy here. Then, you know, I hope everything go good for him. He got good heart, everything. You know, he been there, I leave him, you know. This wet? Yeah. Big Cat not gonna live in together. Big Cat got some problem to work out. I 
I don't want to say, you know, what her did, you know, I really don't like it, you know. And the Lord told me, forgive, forgive people what they did to you. And honest, you got to do things what you want in life. You know, I wanted to be by myself for a while. I see one girl, you know, her name's Shirley, you know, you know, her set me how I am. You know, Shirley, love, you know, her set me about my talking and everything. And her being there. Uh, well, this is different shapes and we're separating them. Like, we got hearts, we got round ones. And we got square, and then we got, and then we got teardrops. This one is, with you I'll need more love. With you I'll need more love, I'm sure. With you so gentle, soft-spoken, demure. First come, first serve, I ask you first, for better or for worse. You denied my dream in the sky. You thought I'm a loser, broken down accuser. I never married, I waited for you, the one so. Why now are you so blue? I haven't been sick for a long time. Me and George got close together. We got married at the church across from Silver Spur. We go there every weekend. Deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. When I get scared or anything, I pray to God, you know, to give me strength. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. Was there anything good about living at the Silver Spur? Only good thing was I met George. See, I, I've i always been independent all my life. And I, I felt like when I was at Silver Spur, I lost my independence, you know? When you gear yourself in service of people, it, it doesn't stop at the facility, you know? Um, I, uh, you know, I can find myself out at a shopping center. Um, and I was at Walmart the other day and I come across a slippery spot on the floor, you know, so, so I went and got some uh, wax or something and put a little ring around it, whatever, and then went and got somebody, you know, said this has to be fixed before somebody, you know, slips and falls and gets hurt, you know, so I find myself doing that all the time, you know, so. I'd rather help people, and with psych you can't really help them. Like, you Why can only, you like, can't... talk to them when they come to you, like, all of sex are hearing voices. But, you know, there's something you can do. I just don't like it. I'd rather help people in a hospital. And <coughs> it's kind of upset you. You know, all these people, are, you know, how they are, and they come to you upset, and they want you to help them, and you can't. Well, the saddest thing I think about mental illness is currently they don't have any cure for it. If you have it, you're going to have it for life. Uh, a lot of them that have gotten better and moved out on their own, you know, you don't see those because they're gone, and, and I don't see them anymore either because they improved and they left. So I, I've certainly seen that off and on, um, but the the ones who you know the ones who aren't able to get out and move on stay here and often stay here for for years or or, or decades or whatever. You know, for for those people, we just try to get them as good as we can and you know take what we can get.
right, right. Okay, hold on. All Kurt do is bring me down emotionally. I mean, he was he was cheating on me. He was always want money, always want cigarettes, always want this that. And I couldn't deal with it no more. With me, I saw no wrong with Kurt. I thought he did no wrong at the time. He got in real bad arguments. He got in this fight. He got in all kinds of shit. Actually, what's up, son? Hey, Brian. Hey, Brian. Oh, sorry. I thought everything was. Y'all been good? Yeah. No. This is my therapy whenever I'm sad or depressed or even whenever I just want something different. This is my I'm going to do something a little different since it's a Christmas show. So we'll go through some of the songs and uh, even wrote some jokes for you. We'll see how you like it. So. so we'll get started. I'll sing a little bit of a medley. And once you know, sing along with me, okay? To be spelled, I want me to die on my. He said, I, I fuck her. For the amazing. You know, one guy told me that night for civics, but he said, man, we, you know, we miss you over there. You know, you all the time had been laughing. You know, me said, all, me said, all you did for civics, but, and really, they don't, they don't really want that. Why did Mrs. Claus throw Santa out? Because he calls her a ho ho ho. <laughs> <laughs> well, you ride down here about a half a mile. You'll come to the road that takes you to Randsburg. It's a narrow road, but it's straight. Take it. I was gonna move out, and I was getting ready to move in with Kurt. I just said, no. I'm happy to hurt so much for Silversburg's always been my home away from home. I'm gonna die here. was looking for the loneliest soul. How was I to know you had the beauty of a fool? My heart goes with you wherever you go. You're in my thoughts and prayers and midnight cares. Reach for me this coming down, for it is with you that I belong. it is when two strangers fall, that
that we are no longer the loneliest of all. That's it. So put your spurs on and get on your horse and we'll ride off into the sunset, my man, okay? <laughs> okay.